Romans <clears throat> chapter 13. Let every soul, saved or lost, be subject unto higher powers, kings, presidents, judges, mayors, captains. For there is no power but of God. Well, here, I'm just going to follow God and do, and do what God tells me to do. When God tells you to follow the higher powers on this earth. If you're going to follow God, what he, what he tells you to do and disrupt the law and, and the civil uh, works of, of a government, you're not following God. Romans 13 says, cast out today by many Christian Americans. Because you're going to learn something about the government in chapter 14 verses 14 important verses that many today christians will stand the judgment seat of christ and lose crowns because they don't want to do because of two terms of one man for there is no power but of god so if there are higher powers but there's no power that is of god who put them into office had to be God. And Satan has that ability as he spoke to Jesus in Matthew and I believe it's Luke. If you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this thing. God has also given Satan the ability to set up men in government. But God has the final authority over setting men up. God has the final authority. Listen, you can die and you'll be no more ruler. We got to realize from the time we are born, when we come from our mother's womb, I don't care if you don't like your mother, I don't care if you like your father, that God has put you in subject to a man and a woman. You're going to grow up, I'm going to get out of my house, and I'm going to get a job. You're going to be subject to a boss, man or woman. If you want to go down the road and speed, you're going to be subject to a police officer, man or woman. When you, school days, you're going to have a teacher who's going to be over you. You're always going to have somebody over you. And God with that tells us what our conduct should be. And when we start off this chapter here, it says every soul saved or lost. People at the great white throne judgment will be judged on their conduct to the ruler that God set up. That's interesting. The powers that be are ordained. Okay, Christian, what's ordained? I have an ordained preacher. We're going to ordain some students. God said, ordain the powers that are over you. He has set a strict ruling a position set by God not for the ministry oh yes for the ministry we'll see that in a minute whoever's in rule or authority you can't nick and pick and chew everyone's happy now because the president is going to be in January but they're not happy with the president is in right now. You're a bunch of pantyways you complain about the people marching the streets because the woman didn't get the White House You've been griping and complaining for eight years about the one that's been in the White House. You're griping and complaining just like they are. You're no different. I pray for the president. I'm going to be sitting down one of these days starting writing a letter to uh, President-elect Trump about his soul, about his salvation, about what the Bible says he should do with Israel. I mean, you're going to do that. And I've done it since, I believe, ever since at least Reagan. I've written the presidents that have gone into office. I care about their souls and their family. Whosoever therefore resists the power. You know who was governor at this time Paul was writing? The man, yep, man named Nero. You go back and read what he was doing to Christians. He burnt, one of the things, one of the wicked things, he burnt the entire city of Rome and blamed us. He would have a patio dinner. He would have Christians put on stake 
uh, bars in tar and light them. And he would say that this assembly, this patio dance, this patio party we're having, we're having the light of Christ, of his Christians. With Nero in the power of killing Christians, Paul said, Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the damn, resists the ordinance of God. Pharaoh in the time of Egypt with the, uh, with the Israelites, God sent him to be. And God told you in previous chapters, I put you in that power because I knew you were going to exactly knew how you were going to act. I knew you were going to mistreat them. I know you weren't going to listen to me. And they griped and complained, but God put that man in, a, in that office. This is a powerful 14 verse. This is, this is one of my inklings about Christians and their attitude towards one man. See, you run for it. I wouldn't want that office. So, who's over there for resists the power, resists the ordinance of God? So, where do you get the word when you call laws in a city and a place? Ordinance. That came right out of Romans 13. Look at that. When a cop pulls you over, Christian, and the ordinance number of what, blah, 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 for what you disobeyed came out of Romans chapter 13. You stand before the judge, you know, what's the code? What's the ordinance that they broke? Romans 13. You stand before a judge or police officer breaking the ordinance. You just file Romans 13. Isn't that an interesting word that God put there? Ordinance. And that is in our laws of this country. Ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. All right, for the lost man, the lost soul, he's going to get hell, lake of fire. For the Christian that can never lose his salvation, what damnation could you get? Give me that crown. Give me those crowns. Wood, hay, or stubble. That's the only damnation a Christian gets. Imagine losing crowns because you want to be a sissy about who's ruling the nation or the law that the nation set up. The law that this nation set up is set up by God. It's ordained by God. It is resisting the ordinance of God. Why would you want to lose a crown for that? Or crowns? I'm not happy with the laws. I'm not happy with some things from this government. But God's in charge. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. I've used this illustration over and over and over. If a police car pulled in front of my yard right now, what well, what my neighbors did. And if you know my neighbors, you say, oh, what are my neighbors? If he started walking up to the driveway, I don't know. Dun, 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 got no guilty conscience. He might be telling me that someone did something in my yard or or there's been a notice that you know, something in the someone in the family they want to get a hold of it. Like one time I had to have the police come get wake up my wife. I was in the hospital. I was scared. I didn't know what was going on. There was nothing wrong. This you know, just want to inform you. Your husband's trying to get a hold of you. You know, he's he's scared. He wanna make sure everything's okay. But when you're going down the road and that red blue light start flashing, and you've done something wrong, that's to be your terror. God said that's a terror because you're doing evil, evil, speeding, evil, stealing, evil. Any kind of thing that's going against the ordinance that God has told him. Will thou then not be afraid of the power when you do evil? There is no fear if you do right. We had another time with the police officer. We're on the street with the street ministry, and the, the cops started, and security started coming over, and they, they're busting people out. There were people there who wanted to. He walked over. No, they're okay. They're fine. They can stay. They're not doing. They're not breaking the law. They're not doing anything wrong. And we had another time. Cop came up to us, shows a picture of somebody. They, you know, I know you guys here. If you see this person, can you let the security or can you let us know? 
And I got to get on the fence, you know, even still with the street man. Because the cop stops walking up to me, and probably most chances are he's going to try to get me to stop preaching or someone's aggravated that we're doing. Still, it's not my terror. I'm doing what the Bible tells me to do. And if I get handcuffed and put in jail for preaching the word of God, it is no terror. I'm doing what God's told me to do. Now, if I were to go across the street into a property that I have been told by several people legally that I don't belong, and I get handcuffs put on me, I stand before a judge, I am in the evil. Because I am not where I'm supposed to be. And then I become a fool. There are land where there are divisions where we street preach where we are not allowed. If I cross that barrier, then I'm guilty. I had resisted the ordinance of God and I could lose rewards. And we had that happen a couple weeks ago. I crossed the street and we were on a ground that we still could stand that they did not like. I was still fulfilling the law. So cop, hey, I'll go check. And, you know, everything went by. He's waving at us as he's going by three or four times. Will thou not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, saved or lost, every soul. And thou shalt have praise of the same. I can wave the cops and say, hey, good afternoon, officer, and all that. And they're going to respond the same way to me because I'm not a troublemaker. I'm not on their books. My name is not known because of because being guilty or anything. Matter of fact, if you really say that, you know, for the police department and us being faithful to God, they really enjoy where we are because if anything did happen, they could rely on us to be faithful witnesses. If you're a Christian, you're afraid of the police. If you're afraid of a judge, you're violating Romans 13. If you hate the police, if you hate the judge, if you hate the president, you're in violation of Romans 13. We're going to take our guns. Well, who do you have more faith in, God or gun? They both start in G, don't they? One's a small G. The other one's a big G. Ooh, I just turned people off on that one. That's a good one. I remember that one. And thou shalt have praise of the same. Some cops like us doing what we're doing. Some cops respect us. For he, he, he who? Who's the he? The powers. The person in charge. Now watch this. He is a minister of God to thee for good. Remember we read about minister earlier yet last night? Remember I said a minister in the ministry, verse 7, is someone that takes care, that will help you and give you aid and, and strengthen you and help you. It's not just a title preaching on a pulpit. Here's a guy who's a minister of God, and he could be lost. He's not in a pulpit, and his job is if a guy's sneaking through my window at 3 o'clock in the morning to take that guy and bring his butt down to jail. That's God's minister. He's ministering to me for protection to make sure my family and myself are okay. He's supposed to be out there to make sure those drunks are off the road. He's to make sure that that speeder is going to slow down. That's a minister of God for our protection. You don't think so? Take every single police officer in this country, 50 states. Take them all the way and say, you lost your job. Don't come back and see what kind of mayhem you're going to get. Right now, they're treating the police officers with quite disrespect, shooting them and killing them. And the media is not crying over that. But if they shoot a, a thug that's drunk, that's doing drugs, that's doing a crime, oh, how bad it is that he killed that guy who, shoot, who pulled the gun on the cop. And the, cop, and the cop can't pull his. Well, guess what? You're going to be reaping that later on. And I hope I'm long gone by rapture or death before you start reaping that nonsense. Oh, by the way, cop killers will stand before God and they will be judged. Okay? It's right there. For, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. And they're not afraid of, of, of killing cops. That's the shame. 
they think they got rights. For he is a minister to God to thee for good. Cops, your parents, your teacher, your judge, your president, your mayor, they are set up by God. Their offices are described in the law, you know. And a lot of that law is brought to our our laws and regulations in this nation. Minister. You didn't think they were a minister. You didn't think Barack Obama was a minister, did you? He's a ministry of the president of the United States in his office. How do you respect that? If we put more prayer into him in the last eight years, maybe we would have had the government we would want under Jesus Christ. You can't pray for somebody and gripe about and expect God to do wonders. He is a minister of God to thee for good. Yeah, there's some wicked one. Adolf Hitler wasn't for good. But we know Adolf Hitler, by sure chance, and the Bible doctrine itself was put in by Satan to kill Jews. And yet, I guarantee under under Germany, I would think that there were some laws that did protect the people. I, it couldn't be that totally right. But if if conditional, thou do that which is evil, be afraid again. Be afraid again. For he beareth not the sword in vain. Ooh, sword. You know what a sword is? For he is a minister of God again. Look at that. Be afraid. Minister twice. Verily, verily. This is something important. More important than the birthday of Jesus Christ. That's repeated. This is more important. Your conduct with the government officials. Twice. If you're going to do wrong, you better be afraid of them. And twice, they are ministers. There's some people that they're minister, they're preacher, they're church. Man, he's God. He's the one. Well, so are these, these, uh, these people in office. Oh, wait a minute. The pastor is called an office, too. It's the same words, same terminology. Church has ordinances. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute. Ooh, 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 you see that word execute? Draw a line to execute to that sword, and you see that Paul is for capital punishment. Paul said early in the book of Acts, man, if I'm guilty of, of blood, I refuse not to die. You know what Paul tells the government of the United States of America? You got people out there you're supposed to punish by death. And if you don't, you'll that, that ruler will stand. The 50 states of America will stand before the great white throne judgment and declare, why didn't you kill those guys? We just had an episode here where someone opened, someone was shot by a boyfriend. And now they're saying, oh, my geez, guess what? Did you know he had a long record? Really? Had you done what God told you to do with those criminals, they would not have been a murder the other day. Because he'd be in the grave or in hell or heaven. Probably hell. Your prison system does not work. It's called correction. And there is no correction. I spent eight to ten years in the prison ministry. I had I was kicked out of a prison ministry, out of the prison, by a guy who didn't go to the church, who was in charge of the re religious organization of that church, because I told him what Bible to read and what church to find when they got out. And he told me I'm not welcome here, speaking this juber goober Greek and Latin crap. And his correction is going to bring those men back in once they get out. And I had one guy within a week. Oh, I'm going. I'm out of here. See, see you, Brother Hayward. I'm going to do good. Yeah, okay. Make sure. Get away from Blah, blah. Gave him the standard speech and all that. Within a week, he was back. That's not correction. So 
Sword and execute are two words in this chapter go right together in the same verse. Ave Revenger. Well, that's kind of funny because look at verse 19 and 12. Daily beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, save the Lord. And he comes down here, he says, the sword in vain, he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. God allows the country to execute and put vengeance, which is supposed to be God's. Paul said to the Christian, don't you do it. Paul says to the government, you do it. How's that? As a Christian, if somebody in a church that I'm in murders somebody, I'm not to kill them. That's not my job. Now listen, this has happened to me. A different crime. I am to call the police department. I am to report that person, have that person arrested. And that, that county, that state is supposed to have them executed for murder, according to the Bible. I'm not to do it. Because the Bible says... Let God do the vengeance. But when it comes to civil government, God now says, through Paul, the, go the government's supposed to do it. So it's almost like the government is stepping in the, in the throne of God. And what's it all about? Why is God saying that? Because, where does it say? Thou shalt have praise of the same. Thou shalt not fear when the when the people who are evil are put away permanently. And there were crimes in the Old Testament that what you've done deserved capital punishment. And then they'll never do it again. The greatest determinant to crime is you're in a grave. You can't do it ever again. Well, what happens if you got the wrong... And what happens when you make a mistake at work? Or are you perfect? Huh? For he is a minister of God to thee for good. So the government doing what God wants them to do is for my good. You take all the criminals and, and you execute them like they're, they're supposed to be. You jail them like you're supposed to. You provide the fines to them they're supposed to. I don't want to have to. There was a time you didn't have to lock your doors. You didn't have to lock your cars. You could have any, every kid in the neighborhood in your house, and your mom would make Kool-Aid for them and brownies, and there would be no threat. There'd be no poison. You'd fall out of a tree, and you got bumped on the knee, and that mother of that house would take care of it and call your mom and say, you know, he fell out of the tree. He sounds, he's okay. You know, put some ice on it, guess what? And want to be called 1-800-LAWYER, I'm going I'm to screw you all your money. See, we're violating God, so we're getting evil. This evil in this present country right now is going to get eviler, if that's a word. But it ain't not to. You can decur crime by doing what Romans 13 says to every soul. You can get the church right to every soul if you acknowledge and listen to Romans 13. But you're not going to. Avenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now, that's one step off from the law. Because you remember the law said, let's say like someone was supposed to be stoned. You were to have two or three witnesses. And then those two or three witnesses will be the first one to cast the stone. And then the people of the, of the town or the city will take part in the stoning. Paul says the government. Now, he says, the sword to execute judgment. Remember who's on the throne? Remember who's in charge? Nero. He's killing Christians just because they're Christian. Rome and their gladiators. Men are dying at the Colosseum because of proof. I'm a man. I'm stronger. Until the next man kills them. There is bloodshed and murder going on in Rome to where this epistles written to and Paul says all that junk all that evilness all that sin all that murder that government's still in charge to keep you safe wherefore ye must need be subject how's that how many times did Paul write in his epistles pray for pray for them pray 
Pray without ceasing. Pray for the rulers. Pray for the needs be subject. Not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. When that cop comes walking up your driveway, I didn't know that. One. What'd you do? What'd you do? Did you call the police? No. Yeah, one day we're sitting there. The cops come knocking the door. How, how you doing? Uh, yeah, we got a 911 call here. My wife went away. It could have been my husband. He's in the tub. He's okay. Uh, Henry? Henry was afraid and hiding underneath the bed because he'd done something wrong. He called 911. And we had to cop in him a little conversation. I wasn't afraid. I didn't do it. My wife didn't do it. But the one that did wrong, he was afraid. We ought to have a good conscience with our leaders of our nation. I should not be so so thing that let's say if God were to put President Obama in my path Saturday in the street ministry, that I would be so guilty of making fun that I could not witness him to, to the, about Jesus Christ. Where I could walk up to the Secret Service and say, Sir, I, I know I'm asking the thing. Can I just give that man a gospel track about Jesus Christ? And then thinking back, man, all the bad names I call him, which I don't. Wouldn't that be hypocritical if God's giving you an opportunity to give him the words of life and all the bad mouthing you've been doing? Be good. Do right. Be subject. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject. Not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. You better have a good conscience. Do I like all what the government's doing? No, I don't. But I think if I pray about it, four, 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 four. I like that. Four, 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 this cause. Uh oh. You tea parties, I'll give you a minute to walk out. I'm going to let you go get a little tea. By the way, we don't drink tea. We, we drink coffee in America. <sighs> for, for this cause, pay ye tribute. That's taxes. Ooh, now we're getting the taxes under Romans 13. I'm wondering how many, if I go on an internet set, search, how many tapes or CDs I can find from churches on the study of Romans 13 with a love offering. 1995 and a $6.35 shipping handling. Hmm? So, for, for this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's three times. That's a verily, verily, verily ministers the irs is needed so the government can do what it needs to do if you don't treat those those black paved roads they're going to get pot fully they're going to get cracked they're going to get crumbled and they're going to ruin your suspension system and if one street light goes out within time and another another street light is going to go out with another time and then you're going to have no street lights and then you're going to have some problem with your house. You're going to call the police department. You're going to say, well, we couldn't hire, we couldn't afford any more police officers. You're on your own. The government needs money to run just like you need money from your employer for you to run. As the church needs money for it to run. These tea power years, you know what they want? They're, they're not they they're not gonna fight taxes on it so they can give more to God, so they can have more in their pocketbook and spend it on fishing and guns and everything else they do. They just want more in their pocket. But they want the government to do more things for them. You can't take care of vets, and, and I know they're rotly take, but it was a mild treatment of our vets, they need tax money to take care of them. Okay? Unless you want to invite vets in your house and feed them, take care of them, on your, well, go ahead. But that's stupid like a tax. Oh, they use money for abortion. I use my tax money. I say, you know what? 
It's for the roads. It's for the police department. It's for, you know, the clean beaches and stuff like that. Everything else, my neighbor can pay for that. I put on my I put on my check for sure. I got certain missionaries I support. I, I put it right there. Okay, so the, so when I send my check money in for the taxes, it goes for the police department. It goes for the, the nice good roads that they just put out here for me. But it says, "Pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Their job is to keep you safe. You pay your pastor." You're to pay the, the officials. Your pastor's job is to have you know what the Bible says, to know what sins are in your life, to correct your life before God. The government's job by God is to keep you safe and keep you conscious and keep you whew, feels good. Well, they don't do it. Then they're going to answer God for themselves. If God's given them the, 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 the title of minister and they don't do it the way they're supposed to, they're going to answer before God. Because we go back to verse 19 and 12. Daily beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. It, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay the saith the Lord. If that government, if that, if that uh, uh, president, if that police department is not doing what God wants them to do, let God go after them. You just be a proper model citizen. Because if you go against Romans 13 and then you try to stand up for a Christian, someone can take you in court and say, I heard you say that. I know you belong to this organization. I know you didn't pay this. I know you didn't pay that. Well, what's your problem? Live clean. Do clean. And God will bless you. Attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues. Ooh. Pay. Tribute to whom tribute taxes. Tribute is due. Date due. Pay it. Now I'm going to say I don't. Way things fall with my. I don't pay by that due date. But I get a what? I get a. I get a fee. Late fee. So God says, when you don't pay by your payment due, don't complain about that late fee, because that's your fault. See that? See how that works in the Bible, too? So I try to pay my bills on time. Custom to whom custom? That's a tax. That's a, that's a you know, when, when products come in, this co in the country, you got to pay a custom. If you go over to France and you buy stuff, when you come back to the airport where you are going to land at the airport, they're going to have you meet customs. And you got to say, hey, I bought this, this stuff at France, and then they're going to charge you. You don't sew it in a in a, the luggage. You don't make it so they can't find it. you got to turn it over for a fee. Pay it. That's what God said. Fear to whom fear. If you don't do it, you're going to be in trouble. Honor to whom honor. Wow. Now, this next one, verse 8, I'm going to have a little trouble with this one. Owe no man anything. Now, I've read the commentary. Says they're saying what they're talking about is the taxes, what we just read. It's a continuation of verse 7. Okay. Sounds good, too. But also, let's put, uh, let's put it one more account as far as like credit cards. You're not to go use your credit card and then, you know, pay monthly and all that. I, I'm in the same boat. I got a Target card. But then I got it with that. That's my own fault. Okay. That's my fault. But then I got, I got one question that comes in my life with verse 8. Oh, no man, anything. What do I do when I've been to the hospital and doctors and I get a 10000 1000 a 2000 and a $300 and a $60 and a $70 bill. And there's no way to pay it unless I make monthly payments. I now owe somebody money. And I couldn't find in the commentaries any illustration like that. You go to the hospital, especially without insurance or even with insurance. You're going to get a bill. And it's going to be outrageous. Especially if it's from radiology.
So I, I'm going to owe no man anything, but I'm going to say an account. I got a target card. I owe money on that. That's my fault. I've got medical bills that we could just die. And you still, listen, person that you love is in the hospital room and they die, you still get medical bills. I know that. And they're big and they're large. But to love one another. That's kind of, owe no man anything but love one another. It's almost like the person that you need something from, you know what, I, let me give you a discount. Let me help you out. Wasn't there a time in the law where there was, where was a time of release, a time of, of the jubilee where the debts were forgiven? You were helped. At least you were given a year off, you know, so you can get some more money, earn a little more money so you can pay your debt. And at the end of the you know, seventh year, you let the you let the land rest. And the eighth and ninth year, there was this an overflow of crops that you could go and pay your debts off. Remember in the law, it was supposed to be brother to help brother. The capitalistic system is how much I can crush you under my foot. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Look at that. Now watch this. For this. For this. Owe no man anything. You love one another. Fulfill the law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay? That's against your neighbor. Thou shalt not kill. That's against your neighbor. Thou shalt not steal. That's against your neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's against your neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. That can be against your neighbor if he's got what you want. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly com comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know those commandments there were just spoken about? The Ten Commandments is broken in two categories. Your reference to God and your reference to your neighbor. How you how you love God and how you love the person around you. You would do no evil. Now, if we did, I've had people tell me they lived the Ten Commandments and don't know what they are. But I, if you did do the Ten Commandments, verse nine, you love God and you loved your neighbor and you didn't owe anybody, you would not need Romans thirteen one through six. Now, let me, let me, uh, there was a time adultery was against the law. Okay, yeah. Well, break the law. Thou shalt not kill. Isn't that what you need a police force for? Isn't that what you need a, a capital punishment for? Thou uh, shalt not steal. Don't you need a police department when they steal? Don't you need a judge to weigh out? Is the person guilty? Is he innocent? Isn't that what small claims court is about? Thou shalt not bear false witness. That will bring you to a courtroom. That will bring you a violation of papers you sign. Thou shalt not covet. Well, covet will get you crimes. People will steal from other people so they can get what they want. And if you were love your neighbor as thyself, if we would do what God tells you to do, but we are all sinners, all come short in the glory of God, we wouldn't need a rulership. Adam and Eve had no ruler over them but God. And God would just show up in the afternoon and say, how are you guys doing? Until that one day they became sinners. So the very fact to say, oh, yeah, we're godly. We're a Christian nation. Really? How many people are in your jail system? Really? Okay, then you're not a Christian nation. Because all those people in jail would think about their neighbors. They wouldn't be in jail. And then their neighbors would be helping them with the troubles and problems they're having. Instead of stealing, if we all loved our neighbors, you know, Fred down the street, he's having, let's just go help him out. That's brotherly love. Somebody in church has got troubles, you're supposed to help them. Whatever you can, prayer, financial, uh, 
babysitting for him or clothes, whatever. That's brotherly love. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. True love, it, 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 there's no overpowering your neighbor. There's security. There's love. There's a, a good conscience. It's, you know, here they come. They're coming over again. You don't have to go hiding things. You don't have to lock the doors quick. Lock, let's run from them. Keep the phone just in case we get called to the police. It's not that. It's I'm glad they're here. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And go back and read the law. See all the if your neighbor's you know horse if it fell down you help him. If you found something that you don't know who's belonged to. You don't find, say finders keepers lose their weeper. They say, you know, I, I lost this necklace. It's blue, and, and you know, I found something like that. It's yours here. I'm running into debt. I need, I need a little help. You help them. And that, knowing the time that is now, it is high time to wake out of sleep. Get up. You're sleeping. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Paul believed in the Lord Jesus Christ coming. Look at that. The Lord's coming. How is he going to find you when he calls us home? Better not be found in a jail cell. It wouldn't be jail cell would violate Romans 13 right there. You, if the Lord came right now and you're in jail, Romans 13 will be put to your however it is, wood, hay, or stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. Well, I'm a good Christian, really. What are you doing there? Psh, burnt up. Now, if you're in jail because of the word of God, because, you know, properly, by, by the word of God, of God, going against men, like Peter and, and, and uh, John were, all right, that's, wood, that's, gold, that's gold, silver, precious stone. But my jury, the people in jail today in this country are not because of God. It's because of self. I love myself more than I love my neighbor. So I will violate them. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. And it's funny because when you go over Thessalonians, and, you know, don't worry about those that are asleep right now. It's not like they don't have hope. They do. They're just sleeping. And Paul's like, hey, you know what? You guys are just dead. Get up. You're alive. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. It was near when Paul wrote it. Won't you think it's nearer today? This was written, they say, 60 A.D. It's a lot closer today. The night is far spent. That's the period we're in now. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. This is the second advent. There's another piece of armor there from Ephesians. And your feet shod with, with the gospel, the breastplate of righteousness. Here's an armor of light. You have a glow about you. Let us walk honestly. Oh, that's gone. As in the day. Thieves don't come out during the day. Or they used they they didn't. I should say that. Not in rioting. What's going on in America today? Violation of Romans 13. And Christians are doing it. The million man Christian march to Washington. <coughs> rioting. And drunkenness. That goes on in churches. When I was going to start a church my hometown and i was looking up i had to get look up uh church insurance you know there's, there's insurance of church insurance about people who get drunk in your church and drive home and cause an accident 
I had to call them about that one. I, you're wrong. You're completely, I'm naive. You no. Know? If anybody gets drunk or gets hurt at your church function because of the alcohol you serve, this insurance is for that. you, you got to be kidding me. Then I got invited to one of the biggest churches in, in Groton where the kids were going to go have a fellowship and it would involve intoxicating liquor at this fellowship. Not in chambering. That means sleeping, sexual, all the women you slept with the weekend, and wantonness. It's, it's, it's just lascivious. It's just, it's all for me. That's today. That's Black Pride. That's Boston Strong. That's Orlando Strong. It's all about us. Not in strife and envyings. But instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Like your armor. Put him on. That armor, spoken about Ephesians 5, is light and is Jesus Christ. When you put that armor on, you're putting on Jesus. So if you've got the armor on, it's Jesus, and you've got the Holy Spirit in you, you're surrounded by God in the Bible. And when God looks down, what's he see? He don't see your flesh. He sees you and the Holy Spirit in and out. Ah, that's mine. There's my son. And he's fighting. I like that. What's he see when you take off that armor? Stinky, defiled, filthy rag. And make not provisions for the flesh. And Paul's going right back to it. Remember we talked about flesh and spirit, spirit and flesh. We're going to say, here we go. We're right back. Get out of that flesh. Get in the spirit. Get the armor on. Fight. Do right before your people. Do right before the church. Do right before the, the, the citizens that you live in. Make sure when they look at you, say, yeah, we may not like him, but you know what? He's proper. And we're going to get into that when, when we ever, Lord willing, get the first Timothy, when we look at the qualification for the bishop. He, he's not a striker. He doesn't cause fights. He, he's he's law-abiding. He's proper. That's what we're supposed to be. If there is something that goes on and you are in that area, whatever it is, there's a bunch of people and you're there as a Christian and you adhere to the Bible and God and Jesus Christ. It's something you ought to be the last one that they would suspect that you did it. You're, you're in the office, you're working, and someone steals out of someone's drawer a phone or watch. On that in that entire building that you work in. You ought to be the last one they suspect. It shouldn't even come to mind. Uh, hey, we're, no, definitely not him. Pat, bypass him. No. That ought to be your conduct. According to Romans 13. It wasn't one of the places they said about John and Peter. They took knowledge that they had been with Jesus. That's a bold statement. Is it any not to say they're Christians, that they're Christ-like? That includes with Romans 13. 